So I'm here at Seal Rock in Oregon. I should have known right then this trip would be a disaster, but two days prior to that, I was giddy and full of optimism. <laughs> I was on my way to a landscape photography bucket list location. So where I'm headed to now is the whole rainforest in Olympic National Park. And it's one of those locations that I've always wanted to visit, but I've never had the time to go. I've always done a drive-by on my way to somewhere else and just run out of time and never made it. But today I'm making a special trip to the whole rainforest and the light is absolutely majestic right now. So I think there might be a chance of some epic shots. Now I don't know how far I've got to hike, I don't know um, if there's going to be mist or what the conditions are going to be like, but it's a pretty clear day, so I'm expecting that I'm going to get that lovely dappled sunlight coming through the canopy, and if I'm super lucky, I might even get some light rays. <laughs> The next stop was to pay my park entry fee, which at $80 is a total bargain for a yearly pass to all national parks. Got me a national park pass. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's go and get some mossy goodness. See ya. One thing to note whenever you're driving through the US is never to ask for a large coffee because you will end up with 18 litres, a flagon, a gallon of coffee. Like this is, I can't even drink that. By the time I get to the bottom, it's gonna be cold. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's really important to read all of the signage when visiting national parks. And after studying this one, I was glad I'd left my rocket launcher bicycle dog at home. wasted no time in hitting the trail to the Hall of Mosses, where I'd hoped to find some juicy compositions, but as I sauntered through the forest, I realised the bright sunlight I was so excited about earlier, well, it was turning out to be a bit of a deal breaker. As usual, I'm struggling uh, with forests. This is always my challenge, and especially when the sun's out, it kind of makes the light quite chaotic and patchy. Very much easier when there's no bright sunlight and it's just overcast and everything's soft. Then you can you can work pretty much shoot in any direction you want. But this is making it really challenging. Even though it's spectacular and it's beautiful, it's very difficult to find a shot. And um, picking out that one tunnel or that one tree or that one arrangement of shapes is is very difficult so um we've come through this place called the hall of mosses which which is stunning i mean th there's moss that's dripping off of these these branches that is i would say some of it is like five feet deep it, it just hangs down like curtains and i'd like to capture that if i can but i don't just want to point my camera up at the canopy i'd like to try and frame up something with a nice rooty tree and, and i'm just not finding it so I might have to go back down the trail. I saw a sign that pointed to some place called Maple Grove, even though I think these are these are maples. So we'll go and check that out. And then if I don't find anything there, we'll come back here to the Hall of Mosses and the light will have changed a bit. Maybe the shot will reveal itself to me by that time. Well, I searched high and I searched low. I looked for grand landscapes and I looked for intimate details to catch my eye. And while a forest this beautiful is like an assault on the senses, finding that needle in such a lush green haystack was proving rather challenging. After scouring the forest all day long, the only compositions I could find just simply didn't work with that harsh sunlight. I needed to find a shady corner of the forest, and while I never did find a killer shot that day, after I'd given up all hope, I did find this consolation prize.
This particular branch really caught my eye with its four foot long sheet of hanging moss. And I went for a slightly shallow depth of field and this image barely required any post processing. As you can see from the unprocessed raw file on the left, all it really needed was some slight dodging of the highlights and a bit of desaturation. I think anything more than that would have just been overkill. But consolation prizes are not killer shots, so I resolved to try harder. I decided to visit the beach and try for a sunset seascape shot at a very famous location. The question was, did I have enough time to find a killer comp before the light faded? And would the light be any good or was I just setting myself up for yet another failure? So I'm at Ruby Beach in Olympic National Park, one of my all time favorite seascape locations. And living on Vancouver Island, it's a no brainer because it's a two hour ferry ride from Victoria and then a one and a half hour drive and, and you're here at Ruby Beach and I've, I've missed the actual sunset but I reckon if I stop gabbing which I'm doing right now I might have about 20 minutes of really juicy lights to get a shot and so I've been hunting for compositions and I found this lovely little tide pool of sand and I don't know if the, if the camera's picking it up but look at these beautiful textures in the sand there these, these lovely patterns caused by the, the receding tide and of course it's like a mirror reflection and I've got that sea stack reflected in that little pond there so that'll be a nice shot there's some nice color but the best of the color of course is in that direction where the sun just set but who knows we've got 20 minutes before this blush is done and then it's over so I better get busy and see if I can try and find a shot if that doesn't work over here I've got some other little ideas and, and this is what I love about the, this type of sandy beach is you get these I think they're called sand cuts and if you look at these shapes you know they're so gorgeous they're so very abstract and they're they're perfect leading lines really but they've got this kind of like mirror like effect where it just reflects whatever you want to reflect I mean I could sort of forget the sea stack there forego that and then just shoot you know these these very simple looking rocks with the pools and get go for color rather than actual compositional shapes but that kind of thing doesn't excite me as much I want the drama of those sea stacks so anyway I better start waffling and try to get, get to work and try and get an actual shot So I've, I've taken this shot and it's okay, I've got this nice pool, but it's kind of a bit boring, it's kind of a bit, a bit flat. So I'm going to move over there where there's all of these rivulets and weird textures and, and leading lines. I'm going to try and use those as a slightly more engaging foreground, so we'll see. So these two compositions that I've tried to go for, they're, they're alright, but they're a bit boring. And time is running out, so I feel panicked, I feel rushed. And so I tried. I, I really did try hard. But in the end, after a full day of struggling, I got absolutely nothing. But you know me, tomorrow's another day, another sunset. So the next day I travelled south. Surely this next shoot wouldn't end in failure. Once again, I hit the trail quick sharp and got busy looking for compositions. And this time I arrived early enough to reflect on yesterday's failures. It was beautiful, I had a gorgeous day, but I didn't get a single decent shot. As usual, I timed it a bit late and I got there a little bit too late and the best of the light was done. By the time I found a composition that I liked, the light was just way too bright and harsh. So I've given up and I've driven further down the coast now and now I'm in Oregon at Ecola State Park. I don't know if you pronounce it Ecola or Ecola, but it's a fantastic location and you can get a really beautiful view of Cannon Beach and Haystack Rock 
and all of the sea stacks and these beautiful waves just lapping against the sands. And what I love about this viewpoint is the sands give you these lovely, when they're wet and, and the tide is receding, you get this lovely mirror-like reflection. So that's the, that's the plan. That's what I'm going to try and capture. The sonar is about 20 minutes from setting. So we're getting this gorgeous orange warm glow, this lovely side light. So I want to capture that before it drops too low and um, there's a few clouds off in the distance which may catch a bit of a, a bit of an afterglow but they're so wispy by the time that happens they might just burn off so we'll see but I'm going to try and frame a few comps and then once I've found the comp that I like then I'll, I'll bed down commit to that shot and I'll talk you through the shot okay let me talk you through this shot so I know I always say this but this is composed as a 16 by 9 on this video but the actual shot that I'm taking is a 3 by 2 so even though it looks a little bit tight up there and a little bit tight down there trust me when I tell you that on the 3 by 2 you'll have that space so what I'm going for with this shot obviously I love this mountain ridge in the distance and I also love how this wave comes in to the center of the frame from the bottom right corner and in the foreground I've got this lovely little rock coming off this cliff edge and I also love in the left of the frame these reflecting tide pools as the tide recedes and the water gets trapped in those flat areas of the sand and so it's quite a, a nice composition I like the composition I would like the tide to go out a little bit more just around about the, the sunset time because I love these reflections here that you can see in the tide and, and as the tide recedes a little bit those reflections will be a little bit better than they are right now, but it's probably not gonna line up. You can't have everything, even though I always ask for that. So the sun is just about to disappear though behind this big old huge cloud. And I don't know if I'm gonna get the, the kind of light that I want, but I'll stick around and, and see, what I can, uh, see what I can get. It's just playing the waiting game. What I'd love to do, what might be a nice shot, is if I stuck around for blue hour, because if you look in the distance there, that's Cannon Beach. And that's where all of the people live and that's where all the hotels are and all of those lights will come on just after dark so that might make quite a nice shot you know that lovely sort of blue hour shot with that warm glow from the town so we'll see uh, looking at that i'm not too hopeful Uh, yet another failure and while i do like the composition it's just nothing without good light. As soon as that low cloud covered the setting sun, I knew it was game over. Well, the sun has gone down behind probably a kilometer of cloud long before actual sunset, so that means no color. And, it, and if you look at the scene, you can see it's flat, muted, boring colors. So this is my third failure in two days. But I'm not suicidal yet. Uh, there's a few chocolate bars in my camera bag, a few twirl bars, that should lift my spirits and then if that fails I'll go and get a massive feed, a curry or something like that and that comfort food should pull me back from the edge of topping myself. But my spirit has been completely crushed and I don't know if I'll bother waiting around for that blue hour shot that I talked about earlier. I'm just not feeling it. You know when you've just had enough, you're just like, now, no, move on, regroup, Tomorrow's another day, maybe I'll get a shot of something tomorrow. I really hope I get something tomorrow, because if I don't, <laughs> I'll get something. I'll get, I'll get a shot tomorrow. I'm sure I will. Well, you will if you show up on time. Once again, the best of the light was kicking off before I'd even arrived. Oh! I've popped down to Cannon Beach for sunrise, Haystack Rock in all its glory. I've overcome my uh, self-pity of last night's failed shoot. Three failed shoots in a row. I think I'm justified in being a bit sour about it. Uh, but when you come to Haystack Rock on Cannon Beach, there's not that much in terms of composition, you know. There's hardly anything on the beach other than white sand and water. But the beauty of the water is you get these gorgeous mirror-like reflexion. So that's what I'm trying to do. And we arrived and the, sun, the sunrise just kicked off as soon as we showed up. In fact, as usual, we were 10 or 15 minutes late. Um, but, you know, it's a dead simple shot. You can't go wrong with a simple shot of Haystack Rock. Uh, I pushed it off to the left of the frame in that uh, left column on my rule of thirds grid. And I've polarized ever so slightly just to make this, the color in the clouds quite rich. 
and I'm just taking a whole range of exposures. I don't need to bracket because the dynamic range isn't too outlandish, so I think I can get it with just one slightly underexposed shot. Uh, F8, and I'm just under one second. I'm, oh, look at the tide creeping in now. My, my bum might get a little bit soggy here. But I think we've actually seen the best of the light. But I'll still keep shooting because you never know. You know, sometimes I'll uh, I'll say that I've seen the best of the light pack up, and then it kicks off a second time. Oh, finally a half decent shot. Just when I was on the brink of quitting, I managed to enjoy a few minutes of glorious light. And my favourite kind of light on the Oregon coast is storm light, which you will be seeing in an upcoming vlog that I filmed with F4, so if you want to get notified when that goes live, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hey, that looks like that seagull that pinched my sandwich yesterday. No, Oi. no it's not me. Hey, you. It wasn't me. Get back it's here. It's not me. Get back it here. Was... You owe me a sandwich, <laughs> you little... It was a good BLT, too. It's 7.20 a.m. I've had 13 and a half minutes of sleep, and I do have a face like a bag of boiled tripe that's been punched and then dropped on the floor. I'm actually preferring this shot to the big old haystack rock shot that I got earlier. And the reason is, everyone's got that shot. You don't really see that many pictures of this particular scene. And I'm loving this, this wave action that's coming and hitting this, this big rock here. And what happens is, as the water comes in, it wraps around the rock and you get all these shapes. And then as the water recedes, you get completely different shapes. And you can see like that, that wave there is now coming to meet the one that wrapped around the rock earlier. And they come and you get all these different shapes, you get ripples. So I'm trying to capture different exposures with that and hope for a little bit more dynamic light. But even if I just get this light, it's still quite a decent shot. Not a killer shot, but it's definitely something to put in the bag for coming back another, another time and just lodge that composition in memory and get it when the killer light happens. I wish I'd come straight to this spot when we first showed up. So not a bad day after all. I got one decent shot and one composition to revisit during better light, but it was time to head down to Newport to join the photography conference where I would meet my photography hero, Sean Bagshaw. But as you'll see in the next episode, there's a reason they say you should never meet your heroes. Yeah, so Gavin, how about this? i t tell you what I'll do. Yeah. Come back to my camper and I'll give you a private lesson. One-on-one. -on -one. Just me and you. Just me and you? Yeah. Kind of intimate like. So, yeah, very intimate. In, in your camper? In my camper. A lot wow. of people would pay a lot of money for one-on-one -on -one in Sean Bagshaw's camper. I would. And, and they have. <laughs>